Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. Yeah. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate yeah. entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, everybody. What's up? How's it going? Um, how's things in your neck of the world? Um, and I'll tell you for us real quick. I'll just, I'll just give you a quick update. Um, our radio arm, Real Estate Radio Experts, is doing great. We uh, we are onboarding some new Canadian clients. That's a first for us. And it's weird. You know how weird thing, you know how things happen kind of like in streaks? So we onboard a girl, let's call it on Monday. Three days later, um, I get another email from a guy now and he's in Canada. He's like, hey, let's go. Let's do it. And that same day, I get another email from another Canadian people. So, so you know, we've been doing radio now for, you know, we, we launched a year and a half ago uh, um, or so. Um, and uh, I don't hear from any Canadian people at all. Then all of a sudden in one week, like three people raise their hand and go, let's do it. So <clears throat> interesting stuff. Um, it's in the air. It's in the water. Um, so that's going well. Viralcast is going well. Pretty excited about that. We're getting uh, more and more traction with building your own podcast. Um, okay, look. Today's episode um, is with a coach. Now, this guy is a world-class coach. He is um, unique in the sense that uh, you know, you have to do at least $40 million, I think, to coach with him. He's part of Gary Keller's inner circle. Uh, very, very well connected guy. This conversation, um, is a pretty wide ranging conversation. We cover everything from mindset, reaching your optimum self. We talk about some strategies, some tactics. And mostly, though, we talk about kind of what coaching is. Um, you know, and it's not, as most people might think, it's not, uh, you know, signing up with a coach and all of a sudden he is, you know, managing, you know, helping you manage your P&L, uh, you know, giving you new scripts, giving you new strategies, tactics. I think that's what a lot of people think coaching is. And uh, today's guest kind of kind of pulls back the, the cover uh, in a lot of ways. And, and uh, at, at least in my mind, OK, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but at least in my mind, I think I understand what coaching is a little bit better after having this conversation and being the typical coach that this guy is. Um, you'll hear it during the, this whole conversation. He's actually trying to coach me. He's asking me questions. I ask him a question. He's asking me questions. So um, I hope you like it. I hope you're going to get something out of it. Um, you know, I certainly did for me. So uh, that's it. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get to it. Today on the show, um, you know, look, you guys know that we we struggled and uh, work really hard to bring you guys a variety of good guests, whether that's from internet marketing tips to big trainers, and that's what we have today. Today's guest is a MAPS coach. He's a MAPS mastery coach, and if you don't know what that is, that's a that's a MAPS part of Keller Williams. Um, now, this guy has an interesting sort of world that he plays in. Um, if you want to coach with him, you have to do a minimum of $40 million, so he's, he's playing with the big boys. And, uh, you know, Gary Keller has a, has a kind of a personal uh, private little group, and he coaches about one-third of them. Now, how we got connected, uh, we got connected um, through, uh, we have a mutual friend, uh, Nick Waldner, and uh, we, we, we met one another, and we just realized that uh, 13 of my guests, uh, he coaches right now. So I'm thrilled to welcome Abraham Shreve. Hey, uh, hey, thanks for taking the time out, Abe. Well, thanks for having me. And listen, the opportunity. Listen, sure, of course. Now, listen, real quick, just just so, it, it, should I call you Abe or Abraham? What do you feel most comfortable with? Yeah, you can refer to me uh, either or. My friends call me Abe, so why don't you go with Abe? All right, all right, perfect, Abe. Hey, uh, it, I mean, that's so, Abe is so much easier than Abraham. All right, so so Abe, <laughs> so we want we want easier. <laughs> Let's before we get into what you're doing and kind of the secret sauce that that you have and you dish out and you know how you train people. Um, take a minute, tell us a little bit about who you are. I always want to get to know, you know, get a feeling for who you are personally before we understand what you do in your business. Yeah, you know, I call it. I call this the vomit me on you. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, do it. <laughs> All right. So, um, 
you know, I came into the real estate business. I was a, I was a teacher previously, and I, I started as a well-known company for the broker. I think a lot of us do that, right? We identify a mentor, someone that stands out to us, and, and uh, to this day, we're still close friends. I did, I did recognize early on that if I was going to do this business, I wanted it to involve people and teams, and, and Keller Williams is the, is the best place I'm convinced for that. And so I, I ended up going to Keller Williams, and uh, I've always had a coach while I've been there. I believe, I believe in coaching. I believe it's critical to hire that person who's going to be completely and wholly focused on you every week. And, um, and so uh, I had a great coach, and uh, he always talked to me about coming in as a coach. And um, you know, timing just kind of lined up for me to do that. I, I have a new construction background and uh, worked with the company. We did a lot of new construction, and I, I ran many parts of that particular company. And so once I uh, came into math coaching, I actually um, have not continued selling. I've, I focus completely on coaching, and it's where my passion is. It's what I love to do. And, you know, outside of that, I'll tell you, I've, I've got my wife and I will be married 20 years this July, hmm. and we have four beautiful children. Wow. Yeah, life's busy around our house. And then uh, I'm very passionate about skiing and climbing rocks. Wow. Uh, climbing rocks. Uh, you, uh, yeah. Me too, man. We should talk a little bit uh, a little bit later in the episode about climbing rocks. Man, I, I spent uh, probably 25 years doing doing a bunch of stuff in the in the valley and uh, and kind of everywhere but oh man so let's but we'll yeah, say well that. we should talk because that's a that's a big chapter of my story in the valley as well that's awesome um so so you started selling now how did you believe in coaching now, now just just coaching is a funny thing I, you know i i think you know we can look at every single discipline from acting to sports and everybody that performs at a high level has a coach um and you know thematically you know we've been doing the show since 2013 um, thematically, uh, you know, that's one thing that all these top producers, uh, 99% of them have in common, that they all have a coach. Tell me, Abe, why, you know, why is it that, that you know, the top 20% of performers have coaches, the bottom 20, 0% of them have coaches? I mean, it's so clear. Why is it that people don't aren't more open to investing in betting on themselves and getting a coach? Well, I think that, um, you know, if I'm to answer that just kind of with a broad sweep, I would say that um, a lot of people don't know what it is. They're not sure what coaching is. I mean, and, and I think that until they feel the fatigue of doing this alone on the front line, a lot of people uh, don't open themselves up to what coaching is. And, um, you know, we by nature in this, in this business, we come into this world very entrepreneurial, don't you think? Yeah, I do. Yeah, and so we're, we've, got, we've got this great energy, and we've got ideas, and we're excited about all this. And, and at some point, one of the things you'll notice among the top producers is that they move in what Gary Keller calls uh, from entrepreneurial to purposeful, where it moves out of just running this business on raw energy and, and doing it more like a business. And I think that's where people get more um, in touch with what coaching can do for them. And, and there are those that get that early, and that shows up in their results. So, so I think for a lot of people, it's, it's hard for them to understand what someone can actually do. And I think they misunderstand what a coach does and what coaching is. So, well, well I mean, unpack that. What is coaching in your mind? Well, that's, um, that, that's a huge question, and that depends on who you're speaking to. Okay. There is um, there's coaching in, uh, in specific performance. Um, in the world that I play in for MAP, there's, I'm a business coach. My world revolves around helping you hit your business plan. That's why I exist. I exist to help you deliver your numbers, and um, we'll do everything from spend time in your profit and loss, making sure that you're um, – are doing for you what you want. We do everything from the staffing. We use some pretty intense behavioral assessment tools. So as you're building your team, we want to make sure that you've got the right people coming in, the right people on the bus, and in the right seat. I guess it's very big. The reason I say that it's a, it's a pretty packed question is that there's another aspect of coaching that is understanding the mind, 
um, the neuro-linguistic programming piece, what are the stories that you and I have created mm-hmm. that we have sold to ourselves that are, that are guiding the way we feel and what we're looking at, and a, a great coach trained in that world, and I'm not. I'll just tell you right now, that's, Diana Kokoska is our CEO. She's the creator of what MAPS is right now, and, and um, she, she's an amazing woman, and she has built an entire division on this kind of coaching. So in our company, you know, you can get someone like me who's, who's a business coach. I'm going to, I'm going to poke you right in the face and we're going to work, we're going to work strategically and there's going to be a lot of accountability. And, and then there's others who have some pretty, pretty in-depth performance barriers. And we've got people that have specific training around helping them through those things. So we kind of bounce people around. I, I just had someone leave my schedule to do six months in that world. And when they're done, we'll probably work together again. So, you know, here's here's what I think. Sense? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you, and I and I'm 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 interested in digging into this a little bit. Um, um, here's why I think people get coaching. Right? People know they need help, and and <laughs> people know they need help. And um, basically, I th- I think what people get coaching for is is just like you know Tiger Woods, right? He'll get a coach because um, you know to, to to tune up that swing. Now, I think in, when it comes to business, when it comes to real estate specifically, people hire a coach because they're like, hey, Abe. I want to know what new strategies are working. I want to know what new tactics are working and how to implement them. And I, and I, and, and from what I see out in the market is people have that, right? What, what are the new strategies? What are the new tactics? And I, and I see people, right? Cause I'm going to, you know, I mean, I, that's all I do is talk with, 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 with these kind of guys and, and a coach will either, again, what I see out there is people will go, Hey, Abe, this is a new strategy. This is a new tactic that I see working. However, when it comes to mechanically helping people implement those, th- that's when a lot of times I see a breakdown. So, so mm-hmm. I, um, I don't know. I mean, what, what's your thought on that? Because I, I, I and, and then I think, well, I'll stop talking because I have a lot of thoughts on this. <laughs> well, you know, um, the best assistant I ever had uh, at one point sat me down and made me promise that when I come back from an event that I would wait at least one week before I completely rebuilt the entire company. And, um, and I think that our industry, we have so many cool things and so many cool systems and models and tools that are coming down the pike that, um, that can be helpful for us, that it does get confusing what to use. It does get confusing how to hold it accountable. I mean, implementation and execution are going to be uh, the, the, the things that are the most critical in helping someone really succeed in this business. My job as I see it, when you've got something that you want to implement, you've got a business plan to make sure that you've fleshed out all the holes, that this thing is going to do really what you think it's going to do, and then I'm going to fly you up 10,000 feet so you can see how it, how it performs in the overall scope of your business, and then we're going to hold it accountable. And when I say it, I'm holding you accountable. We're going to identify the actions associated with what you're doing, and, um, and we're, going to, we're going to set up accountability for that, and I'm going to hold you to that. And right. I think that that's probably, um, that's probably an area where people that have high energy and and uh, don't get someone to hold them accountable, that's an area that they really struggle because life just kind of happens and this seller blows up and that subdivision fell apart. Things happen from your plan. My job is to, is to keep you focused on the overall picture and keep you implementing and keep you accountable to the actions that you know will bring the result you're seeking. Right. Does that make sense? No, I hear you. And I, look, I think one of the, one of the things that, that, that um, I think that is um, a misperception, it's a wrong viewpoint, is that when I hire you as a coach, not, not you in particular, but you know, that you, I shouldn't expect you to be an expert in everything. You can't be an expert in social media. You can't, you know, you know what I mean? Like you just, you like, there's not one person that can be an expert on everything. Um, and I think, I, again, I think that a lot of people who, who, who I have helped, you know, in terms of coaching, um, um, 
they want that one person who is everything. And and really, your job or my job, you know, when I coach people, and I don't coach people. Um, but but what you do know, you hate about it, Toby? Let me ask you, what do you hate about it? So so I I have found that that what I hate about it is. Uh, is the fact that I end up putting people on overload, right? Because I go, okay, let me learn about your business. Hey, I think, you know, we identify where the low-hanging fruit is. You know, go do this or that, right? And I end up just creating this giant to-do list for people. And, and you know, and, and, and for them, they, you know, most people are slow to execute. Uh, and, then, and then, you know, I get frustrated because I want to move them along as fast as I move. And they don't, they don't move as fast. And then I, then I invariably go, okay, oh, hold on. You are struggling with that. Let's let's table that. Let's 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 pick this other thing that I think is easier for you to implement. But again, I put people I end up just putting people into overload mode because I'm trying to continually mix and match the process, right? The strategy, the tactic with their with their personality and with their business because it's not all about just new strategy or or or, or tactic. It, it really has to, you know, timing has to be right. Your your business and you have to be at a, a a certain evolution for some of these things to to work. D- does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, what I would what I would say is that you're not coaching. Okay. I'd say that's not coaching. I'd say that's consulting. You're teaching. These are all really critical things, right? We need them all. Coaching's different, though. Okay. And and I think you really you really hit on something. Um, if you think of just the challenges that you experience as an employer when you hire someone into your organization. Um, have you noticed that we, we will so often overestimate their readiness level to do the job? Yeah. We overestimate their readiness level to do it. We underestimate what it's going to require from us and the time it's going to take. And as those two realities start to emerge, it creates frustration, and then we start to wonder, well, maybe we didn't hire right. Maybe it's not the right person. When you create, and I'm just going to borrow your words, when you create a to-do list for someone, because, you know, you know this stuff. So you've got a, you know, this is, this is the biggest podcast of its kind right now, and, um, and you talk with, you know, the top of the top. When you create a to-do list for someone, that certainly would ensure success if they just did it. Yeah. Then what you've done is a seminar for them. Yeah. And at some point, you're going to run out of seminars. And here's something I learned from Diana that I think is really important. She talks a lot about how we make our decisions on the left side of the brain, in the analytical area of the brain. But we carry those decisions out on the right side, on the emotional side. Mm. And even the highest driver, and I'm a driver. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm exceptionally impatient. That's, uh, and, and even then, I can see that my... You know, I need to understand what it means, not just to do. Mm. And once I do, you know, then I'm on. And that's what a great coach will help unlock. Help unlock what does this mean to you, why is it important, and what, what, um, what effect would this have on you and your future organization? What, um, what success have you been holding back because we haven't found the right way for you to lean into the discomfort of overcoming this particular challenge. You know, the conversations are endless. Until it's your plan and your list, until that happens, I'm actually not coaching. Interesting. That's in, that's a very interesting viewpoint. And I, and I, I think what you, you were, you know, that's, that's going back. That, when you can, I think what you're kind of illustrating is what you said early, early in this in this conversation is, you know, moving from, you know, being an entrepreneur to finding a purpose, right? Finding a, a, and creating alignment with, with uh, you know, w- for you and your life and your business, right? Finding some alignment there. Because I think if you can find that alignment, everything just gets easier. I can give you an example. Yeah. Would you like an example? 100%. I'm not going to, I'm not going to name the name. I'll just say this is someone that we both know pretty well. Okay. And, um, and they've got an exceptional team. Now, one of the challenges that, that I see among these higher performing teams is if we're not careful as the driver, let's say it's my team. If I'm not careful, I'm going to create this. Okay. Next syndrome. Great. We did that goal. What's next? Right. Hey, great job on that. What's next? Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Well, our, that's, that's not necessarily how to, uh, 
how to continually gain mastery out of your people, you'll wear them out. You know, if we're not careful, we'll create emotional fatigue. And so, remember when I told you that I see my job, you know, at the end of it all, my job is to help you deliver your business plan, right? Yep. Um, so these guys are doing that. They're delivering their business plan. Now, coaching is past, present, future. Presently, they're hitting their numbers. So I'm going to fly them to the future. I want them to be thinking about the future effect of what they're building right now. What, what are they doing that's going, to, that's going to ensure future success? And what do they know now that they didn't know 12 months ago when they started this process that's going to help them in their 2017 business plan or their 2018? What does that organizational structure look like? And what skills and what people do we need in order to carry that out? So we're always kind of flying them around the spectrum, right? And um, here was a gentleman that uh, had, had just come to the conclusion, self-assigned the idea that if you're a top agent on a team and you're hitting your number, then we're going to leave you alone. Mm. We're going to leave you alone because it's working. And I asked him this simple question, where did you learn that? And you should have heard him on, like, just, it was like I wasn't even on the call anymore as he started talking to himself. He's like, I don't know. I, and he said, I go back to a time when I was a top agent and I just wanted to be less alone, which I do not buy. I don't, I don't buy what he said. And I pushed him on that because he didn't want left alone. He hired a coach. He sought mentors. You know, he just didn't, he just didn't put that together. So he's got top, produ- top producing people that are top producing people, not because they're hitting their numbers today. It's because they think how he needs them to think. And those kind of people, those racehorses, they want to run. And they want a leader that will, that will challenge them to run. So he's gone back and, and, and really done some cool things to drive the growth and development of these people that, by their very nature, that's what they want. So, but the worst thing you can do for them is is set them and forget them. Right, right, right. Absolutely. I mean, I think, but I, but I think you. So this for me brings up sort of an interesting topic, and it's and it's the notion of right. You know, I'm hitting my goals today in 2016. You know, what are what is as you said, uh, Abe. You know, what does my 2017 team look like? What are my 2017 goals? And I think one thing that I'm continually asking myself because in terms of a driver, like on the disc, dude, I'm 99D. That's who I am. But you know, I'm I'm constantly asking myself, you know, am I thinking big enough? And I struggle with I struggle with that. Uh, you know, uh, you know, if I, do I want to make you know is saying I'm going to make a million dollars a year net uh, is that big enough? Right? Is saying that you know I want my net worth to be twenty or fifty million dollars is that big enough? Because I think you know the way that we think about our ourselves and our business and our lives, uh, and we'll manifest it. But, you know, but the question is, is are we thinking big enough? How, how do you, in terms of that notion, how do you challenge people to, to, to think bigger? Yeah. Well, you know, l- let me ask you a question, Toby. Okay. Have you, have you had a 12-month period where you feel like you, you lived beyond your potential? No. Have you had a 12-month period? Did you string 12 months together that you feel that you lived beneath your potential? Yes. Everybody has a next level. And the gap between what I know I'm capable of and knowing exactly what lever to pull next, that gap can just be paralyzing to people. And that is the process of getting them to think bigger. And so one of the things that that we'll do is we'll have – you know, and I learned this right from, from Diana, I will have them build out their plan. We'll have them build their plan. And what I'll tell them is, what do you think you could do next year? So I can use a live example. I won't use the name, but I can use one. I've got a, I've got a gentleman that I'm very fortunate enough to coach, and, and it's just, oh, I just love, I just love this team. These, these guys are, this is a legacy team. You'd know them if I mentioned them. Okay. And, um, this year, they're going to do, um, they've got a lot of other businesses, and they're, in their hub real estate business, they'll do $55 million. Get this. We spoke about a month ago, so we're just coming into the end of the second month of Q1, right? 
And they're, they're at that time online to do 23 million in the first quarter. His business plan's calling for 55. If he just doesn't stop, when's he going to hit that? Uh, in another th- three months? That's it. And he, he really was stuck around, I know that's what I'm doing. We've just never done it. He kept saying we've never done it. Mm. Now, see, as a coach, as a driver, as a driver, what I want to do is say, dude, stop speaking and look up. You've done it. It's done. 23. Times up by, times up by four and you've got it, right? That's, as a driver, that's what I want to do. However, if I start, if I just go there and I don't help him through this process at all, then whose answer is it, mine or his? Yeah, it's going to be yours. Yeah, so here was the question. I I hope this is okay if I share this. this. Yeah, yeah. Here was the question. When did you decide you were going to stop progressing? What are you talking about? Well, you've done $23 million. When did you decide you're not going to do that anymore? When did you decide that the activities you did in the first quarter, you weren't going to continue? I, I didn't make that decision. If you're saying to me that you don't plan to continue, then you have made that decision. However, if what you're saying is that you don't plan to slow down, then help me understand, based on your performance, how are you not going to sail past $80 million? And what was the answer? Well, he's rebuilt the plan to do $100 million. Yeah. And, and that's, that's really the answer to your question is, I want them to do the heavy lifting of building a plan. So if I said, if you've done $60 million, let's say, in real estate sales, and I said, all right, so, Toby, will you, will you do something? Will you take an assignment? Yes. Okay. I want you to build out an economic model which is a, a model that we use in our company. It like, comes right from Gary Keller's book, The Millionaire Real Estate Agent. I want you to build out an economic model to do. Now, this year you're looking to do 60, right? Yep. Next year you told me you want to do around 80. I want you to build out a plan for 2017 to do 100. You don't have to do it. We don't have to commit to it. I just want you to build the plan. And they all ask, why would I have you do that? Why would I have you build the plan? I know why. Toby, what do you what, tell me? Tell me why? Why would I have someone do that? Because because if I can build a plan, if I can build a well, number one, it comes real. It becomes real in my head. If I build a plan to to, to do a hundred million, two hundred million, whatever it is, uh, I've just put it on paper. I've just made that real. I've just put it out there in the universe that that uh, that it's it's possible, it's doable, and here's the picture. Here's the path. And so I'm, I'm way, much, much farther on the road um, to completing that um, than, than I ever could be because I have a plan. I have the map. You got it. It is no longer this big mystic dragon that someday I may be able to do something like that. And, you know, we, we'll work in the details. The devil's in the details on these things, right? So I'm, gonna, I'm going to make sure that we flesh out the areas that we don't have. So if you're planning on a segment of your business to deliver part of your plan that doesn't exist right now, that's, we've got to build in the development of that division or of that particular source. I mean, there's a lot of things we'll work through. I'm telling you, 9 and 10 will come back and say, I couldn't sleep last night. I can't wait to get started. And they'll, they'll do it now. We won't push it out till 2017 because all of a sudden they have clarity of action and they no longer have any reason not to do it. Well, right. Well, no, they, and, 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 so again, you, this is an interesting, uh, and we'll, I want to get to this later, but they have no rational reason not to do it. However, um, and I'm, I've experienced this, I'm sure you've experienced this, you've seen other people, there is, once you start to succeed beyond where you envisioned for yourself, and you're in this uncharted territory, I have experienced self-sabotage a dozen times and I don't know that I'm doing it sometimes you know and then sometimes I do know that I'm doing it and I, I strive you know I'm I'm sabotaging myself I know I am um, because you know there is definitely a something that is called fear of winning fear of success um, but but I wanted to you know if you want to comment on that now you can um, or we can save it till later what, what do, you, I, do you know what the fear do you know what the fear of success is no it's the fear of the effort 
It's the fear of the effort of going through the learning curve to acquire what you don't know and to take it from a knowledge to an action. I'll tell People you... that are afraid of success aren't afraid of cashing checks. They're not afraid of having their picture taken. What they don't know is, can I actually do it? You know, uh, for me, man, I, I mean, you're probably right. I mean, nobody's, nobody's scared of cashing a million-dollar check. But, you know, for me, Abe, it's... <clears throat> It's it, it and this is weird, but it, it when I'm ex, you know when I'm getting these big checks and I am winning, I am succeeding beyond what what I and, you know planned for. Um, I start to get into like why me, right? I start to get into into self worth mode, right? Why am I you know why do I have a Ferrari and that guy who works for me, who's who who frankly may work harder than me, um, you know, is driving an old Honda Accord. Right. I, I, I struggle with that. Mm-hmm. Well, are we um, are you scenarializing this or is this your true struggle? No, that's this true. This is real. With. This is real. Yeah. So, Toby, let me just ask you what um, when you think about the businesses you've built and you think about where you are and the Ferrari, you know, when you think about all those things. How do you think about your people? When you think about the people in your organization, what's your motivation around them? Mm. Now, now you're going to make me look like a bad guy because, be, <laughs> because for me, they're tools, right? They're, they're tools to accomplish my goals. And that may be a really bad thing to say because I'm going to all air this, and now everybody's going to go, Toby's a, you know, Toby's a D, right? But, but I see them as tools. That's what they are. You signed up to be an employee. You're not taking the stress that I'm taking. You're not taking the risk that I'm taking. And, you know, and I'm going to push you. I'm going to grow you. I'm going to be your leader but to, to, for my end game. You have to work on your end game on your own. So let me can – I, can I challenge that a little? Sure, of course. So you'll probably be a tool to them, right? Yep. <laughs> if that's if that's the view. So where you know where I would I would challenge you here is as you look around, you know, your organization or as you look around what you want to achieve and, and let me just go back into my world that I'm more familiar with. When I look at the the people that I work with, very seldom is the money their why. Very seldom is that their big why. Yep. It's not uncommon for them to be completely driven by providing incredible opportunity, defined opportunity for the people that are willing to run as fast as they can. And so finding leverage through great people is more than just, I need a tool to do that work. It's, uh, it's I'm going to crack the, I'm going to crack the gate of opportunity wide open for the person that will come in here and show me they want it like I do. When that becomes your why, life changes. You know, and then, that means that we have, we have conversations that we need to have. You can't have that as a mission and lack the integrity to call somebody um, when, they're, when they're not being accountable or when they're not showing up. You know, if I'm raising my hand and I'm saying, I'm going to put a sign on my door and I'm going to be a place where people will earn their livelihood where what we do here will affect not only the people that are working here, but also their families. If I'm going to do that, that is a sacred, op- that's a sacred responsibility. And therefore, I can only have people here that are willing to, to run as fast as I'm going to run, that are willing to get in here and do whatever's required. People that aren't just going to do the thing I need them to do. People that are willing to lean into learning how to think the way I need them to think. When you've got a group of people like that, that's leverage at a different level. That's when you go, and, and listen, you've got a lot of people that you've had on your show that lead their people that way, and they've got people that will go to the edge of the earth for them because of what they're doing for their, for their personal and private development, what they're doing for their, you know, it's just, this is, uh, when your why is money, you'll always struggle. Right. No, I look, I want I as people, you won't. I agree. Look, I 100% agree, and I, and I, I cross that barrier 10 years ago and I, and it, and I, and I, mm-hmm. I stumbled onto this by pure, by, by chance maybe. Um, but, but you, you, I had to get to a certain point 
economically, right, in order to, for me, to switch my wife from money to people. And, and for me, what, again, how I, I'll, I'll, I don't want to unpack this and just spend a bunch of time on it, but how, how I accidentally stumbled upon it, I had a really good employee. I found out the guy had a drug problem. We sent him to treatment. His whole life, everything, every piece of his life changed and i and i was i was i was able to affect that change for him for his wife for his kids everything you know and he went from driving that beat up honda accord to you know buying his own house and having a boat and having an rv and and i was like whoa like i was instrumental in doing that and when i realized that i could affect change um through money and time and 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 being a leader um that's how it changed for me but let me let, let, let's go back here because I, I, I want to I, I, one thing I, I want you to comment on this because you were talking about building that map, right? Having that person build a map for a hundred million dollar uh, uh, year and and then, you know, how that would change his business, how it would change his viewpoint, everything. Um, and one thing that I see. Um, that separates top producers from mediocre producers is fundamentally the way they start, right? Top producers will come in and start with their business and say, listen, I'm going to build a company. I'm going to build a business. And if you're going to build a business, you know, these people start with systems and processes. They start with the back end stuff before they start and go out and go, I need a lead, right? And I think the people that, 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 that succeed in a moderate way, that's how they start this kind of business. I need a lead, right? And I'll build the systems maybe later when we get there. But, but talk to me about, about, about that and you know, what your thoughts are on that. How um, the difference between how the uh, upper echelon, for lack of any better phrasing, the difference between the way they start a business and the way – most of the rest of us start a business. Is yeah. that what you're? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I think the studies are in, right? We know that uh, all the way back to the seven habits of highly effective people, you begin with the end in mind. And um, I think that a lot of people, uh, and listen, anything that I, anything you perceive in me that I do well, I once did horrible. <laughs> you know, this is. This is, you know, this, these are the accumulated nuggets of my mentors and my coaches and, and my time on the front line getting my nose bloodied and, and getting back up. And so I think that most of us know that we can do something and we're, we're excited about it. We, um, you know, we're going to show up to our sales meeting, which is at 9 a.m. on Tuesday, which you should never, ever do because that's the time that you want to be generating for leads, by the way, that's what most of your top producers are doing at that particular time. And we show up and we eat the donuts and we go on the tour and we do those things. And, um, and we're excited and hopeful for the future. However, those with a real plan, they know what they're going to do. And they start with a very clear plan of actions in the morning. And they booby trap their success. You know, Gary Keller says all the time, you, you can't time block every minute of every day, but you can sure control the morning. And I don't have one person in my roster that doesn't have control of their morning, and every good morning starts the night before. Mm. So it's, it's knowing who you're going to call. It's practicing what you're going to say. It's having that down. So we don't monologue with people. We craft the words. Okay. Can I throw in one little uh, soapboxy item for me here? Of course, man. <laughs> so... People say things like, you know, I don't want to sound like a robot, and I don't want to sound scripted. And Listen, the best thing you could do, the best thing you could do is learn the words to the point you don't have to think about them anymore, and you can focus on the nuance. That's mastery, right, Toby? Yep. Where I don't have to think about what to say. And so, you know, I, I, I tell people, if you're on a phone call and someone's, and you're talking to a friend, and you're using a script, and your friend says, hey, are you reading something? Why don't you say this? Yes, I am. Absolutely, because I want you to know, Toby, that when it comes to your needs, I am 100% dedicated to being the most professional I can. Therefore, I craft the words that I believe will help you achieve your goals. So, yep, I am focused on the words I use. I mean, what if you said that? How would they respond? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, uh, I, I've never really thought of that, but I mean, if I, if I, let me put myself in that, if I said that, 
I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think people would be neutral. I don't think they would. They, I don't think they would love it, and I don't think they would hate it. I think. They, I think. I think you'd be. They'd be neutral. And it, see, I think that's the point: is they wouldn't hang up on you and burn any pictures you guys share together. Right. And and oftentimes when we're learning these things, like like scripting and practicing that script, oftentimes when we're learning, we have a tendency to put ourselves on the other end of the table and to interpret what we would do if we were listening to what we're saying right now, and we conjure up an emotion, and then we times it by 10, and we say, oh, I would never be receptive to this. Well, there's the difference between most people and those at the upper end, because those at the upper end, they do craft the words. They do practice on people other than their clients, and they train their organizations that here we learn the words. Here, we learn to read a person. We take people through a process, and we do it at a time that's very emotional for them. And no one's better at guiding them through these waters than we are because we're dedicated to it. It's all a part of the plan. So, and I think I think just just to, yeah. just just to comment on that, uh, Abe is is mm-hmm. uh, I'm in agreement with you, and I because I think that if you can learn the words, right? If you can just have them down, you don't you don't have to think about them. I think that frees up your brain in order to to do what you just said: read the situation, right? Read who they are mm-hmm. and, and respond appropriately. Because I think that true mastery is you know in a sales presentation, in a pitch, you know, whatever is is for me to be reading right, getting a, a line on what your what your disc profile is, right? Because I'm going to interact with a with a guy like me, like a high D, high I guy, way way different than 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 an SC, right? Um, and if I can, if I can read that person, I'm I can I, then I can adjust my the words that I use because I you know I've scripted them, you know one two three, and that, I think that's true mastery is when you can dr- you know have a, a a narrative that you want to drive the person through, and you're able to do that. I mean I do that all the time with this show, man, is, you know, I, I have a narrative that I want to get across, but, but I have to be able to, I have to be good enough to read p- different people, you know, and, 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 and guide them in the way that they want to be, you know, held by the hand and led. Yeah. Yeah. I think you said that very well. I think that um, when we think of the, uh, the golden rule, right, grandma taught us the golden rule, which is and do unto others as you'd have them do unto you, right? This was the golden rule. Well, when it comes to relationship communication, which is what we're talking about, it's, it's do unto others as they would have done unto them. Yeah. I can speak to you much and at my speed, and this is where I've been successful, and if you're the right person, you'll be successful here too. However, if I've got ninja skills, and this is what I think you're saying, it's what I believe you're saying, if I've got the ninja skill then I will be able to speak to you in your language in a way that you get it, that it makes sense to you, that you embrace it, and you take it and run. From my, from my side of the table, that's, that's powerful leadership. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. And I, and I think there's a lot of ways for, you know, you know, tactically, I think there's a lot of ways for us as salespeople to, to, you know, to position ourselves, you know, and, and look, I mean, well, you know, uh, one thing, you know, we have a radio agency, we put people on the radio and, you know, there is uh, a time when a call comes in, a call comes in on Monday at, at 9 a.m. Uh, I book an appointment for Friday at 3 p.m. for me to go in and do my, my listing presentation. You know, there's this dead time, right, from Monday to Friday that I have the ability to use that time to, one, b- start to build a deeper relationship, two, you know, put, position myself in the best light, and three, start to get a line on who these people are and what their true motivations are. And, and we, I won't go through it, but, we, you know, we have a, a very specific, you know, uh, set of calls that we make, um, a script that we that we roll through, and then a, a pre listing package that we put through. And when I get to that that listing presentation at Friday at two p.m., if I see the the you know because they have a little bit of homework to do in that pre listing package, if I see that they haven't opened it, well, I know that they're probably a, a, a D, right? They're, they don't care about they're you know forget the details. If and I and I should have. Pos- uh, Speak to that person that way. If I look at the, that pre-listing package and they filled it all out and it's all right, okay, they're 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 high C, right? So and they they printed a, an Excel spreadsheet to right. accompany it. And- yeah, yeah. Okay, now I know how to to I know I you know I have a better notion of how to to work with them or or pitch them. Anyhow, okay. So so 
Um, so let's go back. You, you. Hey, listen on that, Toby. On that, what you're saying is, it's a skill based business. You get paid in direct proportion to your skill. Yeah. And your ability to read a person, and your and the time you spent learning behavioral assessment, and here we're talking about the disc specifically, allows you to take better care of them, right? Yep. Yeah, we get paid in direct proportion to their skill, to our skill. Yep, I one hundred percent agree. Sobering thought. Um, it, well, I, th- I think well, I think skill and hustle, right? I mean, you know, all this stuff I can mm-hmm. teach you, right? And you can teach people, right? You can teach people these skills. You can teach people the scripts. The one thing that I think is unteachable is hustle, man. You either, and I'd love to get know your thoughts, Abe. You either have hustle, or you don't. I, I don't think you can teach people hustle. Oh, that's a <laughs> that's a mixed bag. You, you know, it depends on the hour when you catch me. I I'll tell you this: I'm a bad coach for someone who doesn't have motivation. Right. And and maybe that answers your question yeah. for you. If you're if you, if your struggle is motivation, and and that is not you know I I uh, held a position in our company many years ago called the team leader, which is you know in the Keller Williams world, it's uh, you're over uh, an office, you know, and you kind of the CEO of that office. I'm not a good fit for that. I'm a terrible fit for that, in fact. When you said I hate coaching, immediately my mind went to me as a team leader because if you're a doer, if you're an implementer, if you're going to do stuff, I'm all in. And that's going to give me energy, and I'm psyched about it, and I will give you everything I got. However, if we're just going to have the exact same conversation next week and you've done nothing, and then the next week and you've done nothing, I mean, honestly – Sooner than later, you're going to become a little disgusting to me. Right. And so, you know, can you teach hustle? I, I don't know. Life probably can teach hustle. You know, people seem to get really motivated when, when life dishes up a compelling reason that they need money or they need a change, whether it's health or loss or whatever. I, I don't um, – I think I can help people get clarity. I think you can. But there is a quality. There is a quality that's common among those that go for it. And, and with hustle comes the willingness to say the wrong thing and to fail and to try it again, right? Yep. Yeah, so I, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. I'm probably just talking a lot now. No, 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 no. You're, I mean, you're, I mean, you're, all this stuff is good. And I think when it comes to motivation, yeah. I mean, I, that's one thing I hate people saying, like, oh, I just, I'm just, I can't find my motivation today. You know, thinking and treating motivation like, you know, like a Where's Waldo picture. Like, oh, where did it go? Where, where's my motivation? It's not, you got to dig deep, man. You got to, you know, you got to, you got to want it. And I, and, and, you know, mm-hmm. one thing that you were, were alluding to, you know, uh, in, in the world of entrepreneurship is the baby effect, right? You can be going ho hum, ho hum, but then all of a sudden you realize that, that you and your significant other just got pregnant. Whoa, you know what happens? Inevitably, your business starts to, you start to get focused and your business will grow because, you know, your back's against the wall. So I, 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 I 100% agree with, you know, we're saying the same things. L- yeah. l- let's talk about, yeah, I think so. In your, in your life, um, in your, in your professional experience, um, you have said three or four times in the last, you know, 45 minutes that, that, that finding a mentor, having a mentor has been, um, really important to you. Um, how does that person out there that's listening to this right now and they're going, holy crap, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it, and again, I don't want to talk too much, but you know, it's very not very often do I get somebody like you come on the show and like all of a sudden, like just, just the way you are, Abe, like you started coaching me literally. Like I looked at the clock at minute 11, you started coaching me. You started asking me questions. You started, you know, having me, me think. So, uh, I, hopefully everybody else that's listening is having that same kind of, uh, interaction feeling from you. But, but how does someone, cause I get emails all the time, how, Toby, I need a mentor. Will you mentor me? If not, like, how do I find one? How would you, I mean, how, how would you suggest people go out and find a mentor? Well, I think, um, I think it was Jim Rohn that said, um, you are the sum total of the five people you spend the most time with. Yep. Didn't, isn't that that's it. Well, I use it all the time. Right. Yep. Yeah. And, and so, you know, first of all, I would, I would challenge people to think about what it is that you want. And, and I, would, I would challenge those people to kind of whitewash who's in front of them. 
and, and ask yourself, really, what is it you want, and who's done that? And it's amazing. I mean, Toby, when, when you see someone that's got the hustle, and you, you can look at them and you think, oh, my goodness, that's me 10 years ago. When someone chases you down and says, and share something with me, this is where I am, and what do you think? Is it hard for you to give to them, or do you dig it? Oh man, I get I get pumped. I I honestly get excited because I, I, I you know I can't. And sometimes like I'm way more energetic than they are because they're like whoa whoa whoa. But yeah, I'm pumped on that. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I can I can get that. I think you and I share that. And so you know, I would say uh, I I'd give you a couple things to think about. One is who's your board of directors? Have three or four people and have the conversation with them where you just simply are saying. Listen, from time to time, I've got tough decisions I'm facing. I may need some feedback from someone not associated with my business right now. And um, would you be willing to sit on my unofficial board of directors? All that means is that I have a lot of respect for you and I trust you and I, I'd like to be able to reach out from time to time and just get your take on things. Now, that for me has been incredibly impactful. I mentioned um, Diana earlier in the call. She's been, she's played that role for me for a long time and I can call her and she's crazy busy. And if I'm facing something and I call her, it's not uncommon for me to get a call at, at nine o'clock on a Sunday night mm-hmm. and her to say, I'm, I didn't forget. I've been running all weekend. I'm, I'm to you on my list. I didn't want the day to expire without us having, without us being able to talk. What's on your mind? And th- that, I mean, that's incredibly powerful. So I would just say, um, build a board of directors and, and, and ask the people that you'd be uncomfortable asking. Cause like you said, Toby, it gives you a ton of energy. So feel free to ask them. And then I would, I would also say, you know, obviously I believe in coaching and that's uh, my life's work. And it's, um, it's something that has been impactful in my life. I am thoroughly convinced that for me, things changed when all of a sudden I was paying and the reason wasn't just because I had to perform because money's going out now. That wasn't it. I hired someone. I hired you, Toby. I hired you. And you are where I'd like to be. And once a week, we're going to talk about what I'm doing. And, you know, they say a true friend will stab you in the front, right? And I tell people, your coach is worse than that. You're going you're gonna to help me look in the mirror and figure out where to adjust and where to change. And then I'm going to go hit it for a week knowing that in a week from today, you're right here with me. And for me, that was a big, powerful turning point in my career. That's awesome. And I just, and I, I, so again, just, just, I want to just reiterate this for everybody. I, I agree with you. I, I've done that many times. Reach out to people and go, hey, I'd love to have you on the board, uh, on my board. And, and, and I, I, just, I just, for everybody, if you do do that, I think what's important is, um, don't come to me or, or, for, or, or someone and, and, uh, and, you know, ask them 50 questions or send them like an email with 800 words, like be very specific. I have three specific uh-huh. questions that I'd like to ask you. Um, you know, and, and again, I think, I think what people can do if they, you know, if they want to take Abe's advice and now I'm speaking for you, Abe, but you know, I think one of the things is, you know, identify people in your market that you would like to get to know entrepreneurs, investors, whatever, um, and try to sit down for coffee. Hey, Abe, you know, I have three, I, I, I've seen what you do have done in the market. I have three specific questions, five specific questions that I'd love to ask you. Can we meet for 15 minutes uh, in your office at Starbucks, whatever. And you, people, I think people will be surprised at the level of, of access that they're able to, to get using that, that, that method. Yeah. Very well said. Thanks. I couldn't buddy. agree more. All right. So listen, yeah, uh, I couldn't agree more. We got to start wrapping up here. Um, I always ask for a book okay. recommendation, so I'm going to ask you for one and I didn't tee you up. Now I will say because you're KW, none of Gary's books, they, they come up way too often and everybody's heard, you know, MREA. Uh, but here's a setup. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy right now? And, and it can't be a KW book. Um, no, man. That's okay. I get that. Yes, I do have one. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think. Nick, Nick actually recommended this one as well on the show. However, for me, uh, The Power of Full Engagement, mm. um, that one was really profound because um, you know, these guys are performance psychologists. They, 
they work with professional athletes, and then they took their, their theories to Wall Street, and they're the ones that coined the, the phrase the corporate athlete. But what they discovered is that, that through positive rituals, we'll be able to overcome our performance barriers. So they say in this book, they talk about how um, positive rituals bridge the gap between the comfort of the past and the challenge of the future. And if you look at the areas of your business or your life where it feels clunky and heavy, whether it's how do I get going on the phone in the morning or and what do I do to really get a, I've got a block around a financial habit or anything like that, you're, you're usually a powerful, positive ritual away from getting that done, meaning naming some steps that you would do the same every single time that would take away the heavy lifting of getting started. You know, they, I'll say this and I'll leave it. They say in that book that, um, that the more mental energy required to begin a process, the less likely you'll be to carry it out long term. Wait, say that one more time. That say, say it one more time. Yeah, the more, the more mental energy required to begin a process, the less likely you are to carry it out long term. Hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Now, Toby, I'm a high D. Can I slip something in on you? Yeah, do it. I would read the one thing by Gary and Jane. <laughs> no, you know what? That's a, the one thing is a great book. I I, I agree. I, and that's that's one of the ones that I've you know that uh, that very few books will I. And I, I listen to all my stuff on Audible, but I listen to the one thing on on an airplane ride um, and literally finished it because it's a pretty sh- it's a relatively short book um, and and back to back I listen to it twice so yeah and for everybody if you want to get the powerful engagement by James E Lore and Tony Schwartz or the one thing by our friend Gary Keller um, you can get a free copy and, you can, and Jay Papa's on and Jay Papa's on who's been you know it's on this show and Wendy. Um, but uh, yeah, I should not ever leave Jay out. Um, go get <laughs> Audible. We'll give you a free copy. Just go to audibletrial.com slash Super Agents Live and, uh, and get your free copy. And, and, and just I'll slip something in for you. Um, um, that, that book, uh, it sounds like one that's on my desk right now uh, uh, called The Power of ha- <clears throat> Excuse me, The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. Have you read that one? I have. Good book exceptional book the principle of stacking that they talk about in that book in the in in developing a habit changed my financial management interesting that's a that's a conversation for another time yeah for sure for sure well let me actually i'm going to put you i'm going to have to edit this give me i'm going to have to put you on hold for just 10 seconds Sorry, man. Uh, I'll edit that out. Somebody came to the studio door. Um, so, so let's just. Hey, and I gotta jump on my next call. I uh, hate to say that. No, that's all right. That's all right. Listen. So, so um, really quickly, where can everybody find you? Uh, probably Facebook is probably the easiest place right now. You can get me on Facebook, and that's probably where I'd send people. Okay. Uh, and everybody, all this stuff will be on the show notes. Hey, Abe. Thanks, man. I appreciate you coming on and uh, sharing with the audience. Well, listen, Toby, I really, really appreciate it. It was a great experience. I'm sure enjoying your podcast. So cool. Fun all right. to be a part of it. We'll stay in touch. Thanks, brother. See, See you, bud. This show is produced by me, Toby Salgado, with help from our research team and production done by ViralCast. If you're building a team and want to make sure you're doing it the most efficient way, reach out to Corker and Coaching. They coach 83 of the nation's top producing teams. And for our listeners, they'll give you a free business evaluation. Send an email to Bubba at CorkerandCoaching.com and let them know I told told you guys to call. Let's go.